Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Vintage Fishing Reel Rescue. Today on the bench we have this Garcia Mitchell 300 Vintage Fishing Reel. Um, picked this one up at a local thrift store. Uh, turning it, it's quite stiff, doesn't hardly want to turn. It also is, uh, let's see, for the reverse lockout's not working. The bail release is not working either. Oh, it does if you go the right way. Okay, there's the issue with that. String's quite wound up on it. All right, I'm gonna get into this, get this thing serviced and back out on the water. Okay, we'll start by removing external components. And here has the push button type spool. You push the button and take it off. The drag is also right on that. Right, there's the drag. A little bit dirty, but not too bad down in here. Okay. Alright, let's get the handle off it. Handle spins off. Okay, we'll pull these three screws here out. Pull the side cover off. I've not done one of these 300s. I have a larger 302 that I have serviced. I'm going to be putting that video up pretty soon. A um, little, di little bit different than this. So let's get into this one and see what's in here. Okay. There's that screw. I like to lay the screws out side by side so I can compare them for length and size make sure they're all the same or if they're different I know where which one goes where okay there's them them cover screws are all the same size so let's pull this side cover off the main gear is coming with it these gears should pull off. These is quite gummed up, quite sticky, that old grease. That's probably why the anti reverse isn't working. Let's see here. That's for the uh, reciprocating spool drive right there. Okay, let's pop this gear off here. We got three different size gears here you can see how they're all laid out on there pull that gear off right there we'll pull this one off and now we'll get the larger one here off they just this larger one's the main gear it's coming with the shaft that the handle is attached to get off there this is the anti-reverse dog here as you can see it's not moving at all there is a spring there but it's it gummed right up you see that's how it's supposed to move but it does not move you flip the lever it pushes it so we'll get that cleaned up I'm not sure I don't see how that comes apart that lever has to come apart somehow does have an oil port on it. I did not notice till now. Actually, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hit it with a little penetrating oil that'll help break up that grease. There we are. The lever's already moving better. Now get this here moving. The dog moving. Uh, spring's still working it's just quite stiff yet I'm going to let that sit in soap for a little bit while I get the rest of these parts off of here and then we'll worry about cleaning that up I believe this gear is going to lift off here as well it does now this gear has this piece here that locks in on these teeth here it's basically a gear. Get a little washer right there. We don't want to miss. Uh, that is what make moves the the axle shaft in and out to 
so that the spool, you know, um, the line will wind evenly on the spool. Looks like this piece lifts off. It does. It's got a pin right there that goes into the axle shaft right there. So I'll set that in my parts bin. Now those two screws there, I'm not sure, look like they hold that plate down. So take those two screws out. To me, this looks like a we. Um, to me, this looks like a fishing reel that a watchmaker would have had part in building with all the different gears that it has. That's what it reminds me of the inside of an old watch. Now this metal plate should lift up off of here. Okay, we want to note that this notch was forward to go around these these pieces here and then this was to the rear that when we go back go to put it back together we know what direction it was <clears throat> now we can pull the axle shaft right out we can get to the nut to pull the rotor off rotor off of the pinion shaft looks like this plate would come out I don't see a real reason oh there's a screw right there that plate might have actually got out of place okay, there's a brass washer on the back side of that plate there is the bail release right here this piece comes around, hits this, and triggers that bale release to release the bale, like so. Got to remember not to lose that washer. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use some penetrating oil to break up all this old grease in here. It's quite... Actually, I'll scrape a lot of the old grease out first, the stuff that I can get scraped out. All right, let's spray the inside with penetrating oil. Let that set for a minute or two. Got the pinion gear here. That shaft is actually part of the body there. I thought that that would come out with it. That's a different design than I'm used to. Taking uh, clean the grease out of this gear. That penetrating oil works really well to break up all that grease. Take paper towel, wipe that off. The gear looks to be in pretty good shape. I'm gonna take a pick, dig the grease out of those grooves. It's quite, uh, quite hard down in there, and you want to get as much of that out as you can. This is the grease I kind of talk about in all my videos. It will uh, flake off get caught up in the gears, cause binding issues, cause issues with the anti-reverse, dogs are not moving, cause, you know, a little piece of that will get caught in there, stop it from moving. Take all that out of there. Okay, get that out. I hit it with my plastic brush again. All right, gear looks pretty clean. You see some debris down in there. We'll get a Q-tip and get down in there. I also have some orifice brushes that I like to use on some of this stuff. It helps get that um, hard caked on grease and dirt out of them. This one here looks like a Q-tip's going to be sufficient as far as getting that old orifice cleaned out. There is a spring right here. 
want to be careful not to snag that and bend it they can bend fairly easy try to get as much dirt out as you can there's a weight screwed into place right here counterbalances this stuff here I'm not gonna worry about taking that off I don't see a reason to just get as much of the grease and dirt out of it out of the back of this rotor as I can try to get it all cleaned up okay, I'm gonna lubricate this is a moving part so I'm gonna lubricate it and see how it is there I like to use this three in one oil it works pretty good also going to lubricate that spring that is a moving part so it will wear also all right well I'll just sit there and let it let it sit there and work down in there i'm also going to lubricate these points on this bale like to work that just a little bit get that make sure it's nice and free that bale works pretty good now so do that and the release and it's fully releasing so fine with that I'll take this piece I'm going to clean this piece up put this back in there's actually two washers there a brass and a fiber oh three of them I believe those would be spacer shims get that in the proper position so that this will contact that release these I'm gonna have to put back when I put that on to the body so it will all slide onto these the shaft here you got old green scrubby don't don't look too green anymore but that'll polish that shaft up pretty nice i believe and also use a little piece of emery cloth i try not to use it if i don't have to but sometimes it's necessary okay take and clean the axle shaft up here this three in one oil will also work as a cleaner also Oil helps remove grease. Alright, that is fairly cleaned up. It is smooth. It's still tarnished looking, but it is definitely better than what it was. Okay, the axle is cleaned up. Put that over here in my part spin and get this side cover cleaned up now. There is a spring down in here. We want to be careful. We don't want to snag it with our paper towel or a Q-tip or anything. We don't want to damage it. That's for sure. Kind of a little bit difficult to get some of that out, out of there. That's where the penetrating really comes in and helps out. gab of grease right there that's probably the main one stopping that lever from working freely now you can see that lever is moving as it should be so now it's going to work with with the lever that dog is going to be engaging and disengaging the way it should be I'm going to lubricate it a little bit of oil it's working as it should so now the anti-reverse will work and reverse lockout. Get this guy cleaned up. A little bit of penetrating oil on here. There we are. Cleaned up fairly decent. It is tarnished, you'll see, but that's fine. Clean these. Let's clean this piece here up. That's so sticky, that old grease. That's why the reel was so turning so slow and very gummed up. All this old grease, you can see all these chunks of grease I'm scraping off there. Okay, 
Okay, I've got all those pieces cleaned up, so now we'll start reassembling it. Okay, I'm going to put this plate back in first. I'm going to put grease down in here where that axle shaft rides. I like to use this super lube. Works well. It's good for cold and hot temperatures. Don't need a real lot of grease, but I want to put grease down in there where that axle shaft rides. Okay. Now we'll take this plate. This went toward the front right behind the rotor. It fits on those notches there. I don't believe there's any reason I cannot put that in first. Snug those screws up. Then we're quite tight. I'm not going to over tighten them because I don't want to strip out the hole, but then we're quite snug. Here's that. Okay. Now we'll put the axle shaft in. I'm going to put a light coat of grease on the axle shaft. The flat part goes up, it sits right on the back side of that plate. You don't need a, bit, a lot of grease on this because when you slide it into the front of the body, a lot of that grease will peel off anyway. So that goes right in there like that. That's moving nice and free. Now this piece here, this reciprocating driver and centric drive, I'm going to put a little grease on there and on that pin. That pin goes in the hole in the back of that axle shaft. That helps to hold that axle shaft in place. And it also moves it when you're uh, retrieving to... There we are. See, just like that. That's how that moves. It's all moving real nice and free. I'm going to put a drop of oil on the axle shaft here. And one right there. That'll help f make sure everything's good and lubricated. That work with that grease too. Help keep that grease soft and pliable. That grease really works well. I use it on all my reels. Okay, we have this side cover. Now... Oops, so let's put this gear back in before I forget this one. We'll put a little grease on the back side of it. Drop this right down into there. And when that turns, that's what makes that go in and out like that. Put some grease here because those gears ride against that cover. Okay. Let's get the main axe, main shaft, coat the shaft, put a little bit of grease on the edge of that. And I like to try to fill the teeth up if I can. Hit that little one there. I'll put some grease on the face of that because there's another gear that rides there. And there we are. And let's put this back into the body. That's the first one that has to go in. That was the last one that was removed. We have this smaller one, so we'll grease it. Grease that shaft that rides on right there. And now we'll put this one on. It slides right on that shaft there. Meshes with the main gear. Put just a little bit of grease oil there and a little bit there. I also want to put some right, just a drop right on the end of that axle shaft. Those are all moving nice and freely. I have my pinion gear. We're going to put a little bit of grease on that shaft and on that there. 
There we are. Now let's put... Oops, hold on. Back up. You almost forget. Get one of these little brass washers that goes on the bottom. That went there. And then the other brass washer goes on the top. Oops. That's what's good about these parts bins. You can look over and see. Actually, I believe that washer was underneath me. That's not where. So put both of them on the bottom. That's where those go. There we go. That's better. Okay, this should be all our internal components. I'm going to put a little drop of oil there, drop of oil there, drop of oil there. And now we can put the side plate back on. Actually, I almost screwed up again. So let's pull this little gear off. Pull this plate out. Pull this. Now we got to get the rotor on because it sits on that shaft there, which put a little grease on it. Grease the gear. Don't forget the gear. The other gear has grease in it, so I wasn't too concerned about it. But okay, that fits right on there nicely. I have these washers that go on there. Like so. Or actually the other way. Brass was down, the fiber was up. This plate sets down in here. There's a notch there that this fits into. If you guys can see, this notch right here fits into a notch on that shaft. Nut onto here. I'll be careful to make sure to start these straight. You don't want to cross thread any of this. There we go. The nut's starting right on. We'll tighten that up. This was quite snug, also. There's no locking collar or anything for that. That rotor's spinning as it is. It should. Let's try the bail release. If you go the right direction, the bail releases as it should. Now I can put my axle shaft in. Put this piece in. Just like so. Get that gear down in there. Put just another drop of oil, just because I removed some with my fingers. And this goes toward the front you can see the shape of the cover how it's going to line up just like so get our three screws started back in i always try to start them by hand if i can sometimes these little screws are hard to get started by hand so end up having to start them with the screwdriver but just be gentle you can feel if they're starting straight or not I don't tighten them up till I have them all started. That way I can still move the cover around. And those three screws were all the same size so that I don't have to worry about where they go. Also a good idea to put just a drop of oil onto the threads before you tighten them all the way in. That'll help keep them from corroding into the body. Also lubricates the threads so they uh, screw in nice. Okay. Wipe the body off. You can kind of see the Mitchell 300, Garcia Mitchell 300 logo now. Right here on this side, you're probably not going to be able to see it, where it says Made in France, right in there. 
take this little bit of dirt out of there. This is a pretty nice shape reel. There's a little bit of paint missing on the foot, but most of the rest of it's pretty clean. There's a few chips here and there. I may touch up some model car paint or something later, but I'm not going to do it right now. You don't need to see that. And then the handle, I like to put just a touch of grease on those threads so they don't corrode. And this will spin back on. This is not a changeable retrieve. This is made as a left hand retrieve. And it cannot be changed. Snug that up. There we go. As you can see, it's working a lot better than what it was when I started. This, this oh, okay. I was turning it the wrong way. That's why. <laughs> trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. See, the inner reverse. In reverse is working. It's instant in I reverse too. It's right there. And it will rotate either way and then it locks you out of reverse. Oh, if you can hear that little clicker too. Take it, put it, and it goes away. And that's for the anti reverse. So that is working the way it should. Now the spool. Okay, I got the line, the line is just fighting me. All these do, I I usually try to take all this old line off, sometimes I don't, but let's take and we'll go into the drag system here and get it cleaned up, make sure it's in good working order. See what we got here, that comes off. Ooh, it's a little rusty. It has this interesting looking flat spring and that's pretty much it there's no fiber or anything any kind of washes just that knob and spring that's very interesting i've not seen that before this shaft will also come out the back you have a clicker down in here it's actually pretty clean in here we want to lubricate this this is the uh the locking locks on to here I want to make sure to lubricate that. I do not like it when those freeze up on me. And you can't get the spool off. I've had to buy new axle shafts and uh, spools before because them quit moving. You can't get it off. They freeze up. I worked, the one I worked on for a couple of hours actually, off and on. Also learn to lubricate this shaft just a touch of grease. Put that back in there. There's that clicker. This just wipes clean. Now we'll get the stainless steel brush. I'll clean this spring up. Let's try and take the biggest deposits off of it. Then I will coat it with a little bit of grease just to keep it from rusting again. I don't believe this thing's really been serviced much. If it has, it has been a long time. I do have to say this is the first time I've seen this type of a drag. I've never seen one that didn't have washers. You know the fiber washers and the metal washers and such just just has just this spring type thing it's flat spring so i'm going to put a little bit of grease on that mostly to protect it from rusting because it does get in the water and you know you get water dripping in there from when you uh retrieve your line It is a keyed washer. You can see on the back side the key. So it will fit on the flat spot there. And we can spin our drag knob back on. We want to be sure to start it straight. It is plastic. I don't want to strip it out. Wipe this out the best we can. OK. 
Okay. Put that line back on. Let's put the spool back on. It snaps into place. I like to work them a couple times too just to get that make sure that button's free. There is a gear down in here that locks that piece onto the shaft. That's that axle shaft that I pulled out of the back of the spool. There is a lot of these spools out there readily available. There's some new, some used. I have probably 10 of these spools in a box. Tighten the drag. That drag works pretty good. Being that style, that is very interesting. Okay. It's back working the way it should. The reverse lockout works the way it should. I'm going to uh, spend a little bit of time cleaning this up. I'm not going to do that on camera. You don't need to see that. That's quite a nice little reel. Quite well made. Like I say, it looks like a watchmaker was involved with this one, which a lot of them, a lot of the reels did have watchmakers involved with them. Alright, thanks for watching this video. I appreciate you guys coming back and watching these. I know they're probably not the most exciting thing, but they are informative. It helps you learn how to service your own reels or tangle them up. so you can keep your vintage reels working as they should thanks for watching if you uh have made it this far be sure to hit that like and subscribe button hit the notification bell so you know when i put out a new video and uh thank you